what's your take on splints in general and bite positions? Just brief, real quick. I know that's very complex. It, it depends on the joint foundation. Right. And okay. how can one know without imaging? Uh, you, can, you can take an educated guess. Right. And there are some splint designs that are kind of like a shoe that goes on your foot even though it doesn't fit perfectly. Sure. And so you can't put a shoe on that's too tight, won't go on at all. Right. You almost have to put a shoe on that's a little bit loose. Mm -hmm. And I guess in an analogous way, that's kind of what I do with splints if I'm recommending something to somebody who's not been imaged. And it happens all the time with doctors. Mm -hmm. Doctors always come up to me at a meeting and say, my wife has this, or my daughter has that. And I haven't imaged them, but what do you think I should do with a splint? <laughs> well, you should image them. Okay, it's your daughter, it's your wife. You should image them. And they them. look for excuses and reasons why they can't do that. They want to get the quick fix yeah. and the generalized statement, this is what you do. But as you know, with imaging, it becomes impossible to generalize. Mm -hmm. So all I can say is, you know, you've got to go with a very generic splint. I like full coverage. I don't like partial coverage. Including NTIs. Is that correct? Any, any kind of anterior deprogrammer. Unless I know the condition of the joint is stable, I don't want to use them. Every dentist I've ever run into that thinks they know something about TMD loves the NTI. What's your opinion on that? It's one? great for my business. Okay. They damage TM yeah. joints. I, uh, you know, it, it, yeah. And, you know, I, I, to be serious about it, I have real concerns because yeah. bites change more and I don't, see, I don't see a lot of the more complicated patients getting better. I see them yeah. getting worse. Uh, now, a simpler patient, it's a nice thing to do. Yeah. And if I knew the joint foundation was good, especially at the medial part of the joint, I have no problem with an NTI. So the lesson to be learned here for all that are listening would be image first, then decide what kind of splint, what to do, what to use, or go to an occlusal adjustment procedure. Name one other thing in dentistry, except the TM joint, that we treat without imaging. Right, huh. there isn't one. Okay, yeah. we now image airways, we image the dentition, we image the periodontium, we image everything. Except? Except the TM joint. And the surgeons do that too. They ignore that as well. The orthodontists, I mean, no offense to you, you're obviously doing it, but most are not. And I'm finding that I can't find anyone in my neck of the country that gets this. So, well, it's, it's a different time to be practicing. Yeah. And I think, the, I think the reality is that when I went into practice, when you went into practice, it was, it was a different time. Yeah. And I think there are pressures on physicians and dentists now that we didn't face. Uh, you know, they, I think they're under more stress, I think, to produce or, or to define their practice in a way that's different from, from the way I define mine. Sure. You know, I had, I had a very fluid practice when I first went into it. I could do a lot of things that would be very difficult to do as a new procedure today. Okay? Right. And that's just the way, that's just the way it is. In many respects, that's better. In many respects, it's holding us back. And so, I think when you get to other specialists and why they don't image, or why they don't even care to treat TMJ patients. Right. They basically have been driven out of the market. Of course. Okay. And yeah. that hurts patients too. Yep. I appreciate it. Um, thank you. Pleasure.